Welcome to this basic course on corporate finance taught entirely using Microsoft Excel. I've structured this course into eight sessions or videos and the topics covered under each session can be seen as outlined here. In session one, we cover the fundamentals of any corporate finance course. We learn about time value of money and how to discount cash flows. In session two, we learn how to calculate payback period, net present value and IRR. In session three, we learn about annuities and perpetuities, both constant and growing ones. In session four, we have a look at five basic finance related Excel functions and we use bonds and mortgages as examples here. Session five, we learn how to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. We use the Kappa model to calculate the cost of equity and we also learn how to calculate cost of debt. In session six, we learn how to calculate BDAS and session seven, we learn how to calculate free cash flows and we conclude with session eight with valuation. In the right, you can see a very holistic visual representation of the entire course. You can pause the video and have a look at how these different sessions are connected to each other. But don't worry if you don't understand much out of this. But by the time you conclude with watching the eight videos, you would have a firm understanding of the basics of corporate finance. Let's move on. So with the first session today, we're going to just discuss the fundamentals. The session is outlined on the right. If you want to have a look at that, we're going to start with discussing time value of money. Okay. We've all heard that a dollar earned today is worth more than a dollar earned at any point in the future. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, maybe 10 years from now. Why is this? This is because of three, three main factors, right? One, if you earn the money today, you have the opportunity to invest in something and have more money out of it in a year from now, let's say. Okay. Two, there is uncertainty if you choose to wait to get this cash later on, right? Let's say you, you enter a scheme where you want to wait 10 years to collect your cash. Then there's uncertainty whether you would be actually able to collect this cash, right? The third factor is inflation. Let's say you live in a country which has very high inflation. If you choose not to invest your money, your money is not growing, right? It just stays the same. But because of inflation, this money is worth less and less in the future, right? So your money is actually losing value with time because you're not investing, right? Okay. So these three factors define what time value of money is, right? This is measured using a percentage which is known as discount rate or hurdle rate, right? You have to clear this minimum rate in order to be happy with your investments, right? So my discount rate could be dis different from your discount rate. Why is that? Because my affinity for risk, along with these three factors mentioned, might be lower than your affinity for risk, right? So if I might be a bit more conservative and let's say I'm happy with a discount rate of just 8%, right? Okay. Let's consider two options here. Okay. I have option A where I'm where I can get a hundred dollars today. Or I have another option, option B, where I can choose to wait a couple of years, but I get a hundred and twenty dollars. Okay. Now I want to see which of these options is better for me, considering my discount rate is eight percent. Okay. So the timeline here, if you didn't understand that, it's basically zero is right now and one is a year from now and two is two years from now. Okay. So option A, let's look at getting, when we get $100 today, we compare that with getting $120 in two years, right? Because there are different points in time, we can't directly compare them. So we need to bring them to the same point of reference to be able to compare them, right? So we can either move the $100 to two years later to see what it's worth, or we can move the $120 to today to see what's worth to compare it with $100, right? Let's go with the first method, right? So if I get $100 today and if I invest it at my discount rate, what do I get in a year from now? So I get the $100, I multiply that by one plus my rate, right? So 
in a year from now, I would have $108, right? Let's see how much I would have two years later, right? So I would get the $108, I would multiply it by one plus the discount, right? So if I invested $100 today at 8%, after a year I would have $108, and after two years I would have $116.64, right? Now I can compare this with option B, and I see that I actually make less as compared to option B. We'll get back to this later, okay? This phenomenon of where my money grows every year, but look here, year one, my money grew only by $8, but year two, my investment grew by $8.64. Why is that? Because I also got rewarded for my interest from year one, which is $8, right? So my this phenomenon is known as compounding, right? So when we want to calculate the value of an investment in the future, we compound that investment using the discount rate, right? Okay, let's find out, let's look at option B. Let's find out what this $120 is worth today, okay? So for this, we're gonna check how much it's worth backwards, right? So this $120, We have the discount right here. Let's add that. Okay. Okay. What does this number represent? $120 is what I get after two years in option B, right? So I'm indifferent between getting $120 after two years or $111.11 after one year, right? Let's find what it's worth today. Equal to, I take the $111 and I divide it by one plus eight percent okay. and that is worth hundred and two point eight eight dollars today so I'm indifferent between getting hundred and twenty dollars after two years or getting hundred and two point eight eight dollars today considering my discount rate is eight percent and I can grow my investments always at eight percent okay if you look at the difference between the two methods of calculation, so when I did for option A, when I had to move forward, I multiplied the cash flow by one plus the discount rate. But when I had to move the cash flows backwards, I divided them by one plus eight percent, right? So when I move it backward, this phenomenon is known as discounting. And when I calculate the value as of year zero, which is right now, this value is known as present value because it's the value at the present. Okay, so if my discount rate is 8%, option B clearly seems to be superior than option A. Okay, let's say your discount rate is 15%. Okay, because like we mentioned earlier, depending on your affinity to risk and how you look at these three factors, different, person, different people can have different discount rates, right? So if your discount rate is 15%, now, option A seems to be better because now you can take the $100 today and you can grow your money at at least a 15%, right? And I would have eventually more than what option B provides you, okay? Let's keep this discount rate and let's look at an example with multiple cash flows and how to discount these cash flows to find the present value each time, okay? Let's say you have a project, let's call it project X, which requires an investment of $100 today, and then uh, hence the negative because you're investing this $100, and in a year from now, the project pays you $50, two years from now, the project pays you $70, three years from now, the project pays you $25, okay? And you wanna discount these cash flows to what they are worth today, okay? This cash flow, because it's an investment, and it's worth the same as today, it's already measured at today. You don't have to calculate anything there. But this $50 you get after one year, we wanna see how much it's worth today. So how do we do that? We take the 50 divided by one plus my discount rate. Okay, so $50 after one year is worth $43.48 today, right? At using a discount rate of 
70 dollars after two years how much is it worth today take the 70 you divide it by 1 plus the 15 percent but now because this cash flow is two years from now you need to divide that by 1 plus 15 percent twice because by doing it once you move it one year backwards by doing it twice you move it two years backwards okay so that's 52.9 and this cash flow of $25 after three years, how do we find the present value of that? We divide that by one plus the discount rate to the power of three. Okay, so these are the discounted cash flows for each of these cash flows provided. With this, we conclude the first session. In the next session, you can learn how to calculate payback period, net present value, and IRR. Thank you for watching.